Welcome to another episode of Listen to Us Rant About Movies. I'm Wes Ford. And I'm Zach Harris. We rant about movies and drink while we do it. On this episode, we'll be introducing a new segment where we force each other to watch a film we haven't seen before, and we'll be revealing those titles to each other, followed by a discussion of what we've been watching lately and an in-depth review of Mission Impossible Fallout. Tonight, I am drinking a beer from Dewclaw Brewing. Uh, It's called Dirty Little Freak. And it is... Yeah, it's um, we find I can't find on the full label, but I believe it is a caramel chocolate brown ale. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, and I figured, hey, dirty little freak, reminds me of Tom Cruise. Yeah, because he's, nice. he's a crazy he's a guy. dirty little freak. He's a crazy <laughs> little guy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you would you pick? I have, um, it ties in less more. I I couldn't find the one you had, so I'd never heard of the Chicago brewery called uh, Bader Brow. It's called uh, Five hmm. Five Star Lager, and it has a nice little uh, cool type on there. Oh, nice! Yeah, nice. I was drawn by the type, and uh, enjoy a nice lager, you know. Sometimes you're just drawn to the the style of the label, you know. Yeah, it's like when I'm standing there going, I don't fucking know what to get. None of this shit matches up with Mission Impossible. It's like, all right, uh, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's hard to find one that matches, but uh, hey, what it's you got? Good, do? dirty little freaks. A good one, you know. <laughs> oh, I remember the other part of the description. It's a coconut caramel chocolate brown ale. That's Damn, the full bud. description. Yeah, so it's a dirty little freak. Let's get a and, sip going. Uh, let's get a little sip. Hmm. How's yours? It's good. Nice. It's lighter than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's it nice. sounds like that would be very heavy. It, it sounds like it would... Well, it's not a stout, which is yeah. surprising. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, no, it's surprisingly light for what it is. It tastes nice. great. Oh yeah. yeah. Tastes like chocolate. Mine's good as well. It's very um it's it's just very drinkable seeming. Smooth and drinkable, I would say. It's like nothing too fancy, just like well executed beer. Right. You know what it's I mean? It's a classic lager. Yeah. Just yeah. fucking classic, you know. Just just fucking classic beer you know <laughs> <laughs> oh anyways let's move on so uh is this where we talk about that deal wes oh I, you know i almost forgot but this is it's too good it's too good you, you i i just gotta hold you for for a second and say uh that this podcast is brought to you by audible and believe it or not some some won't some won't believe it. But you get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-M. Choose from 180,000 titles from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3. Also, if you like what you hear on this, uh, you can find other episodes on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and YouTube. Zach, that's a pretty good deal right there. It's a pretty fucking sick deal, I gotta say. And I mean, we've got so many episodes under our belt now. And this actually reminds me, we didn't talk about it, but our last episode was our 50th episode. Yeah, which is crazy. Which, which makes this episode number 51. 51, wow, baby. It's been, it's been quite a run. It's been quite a run. Yeah, man. Getting them in. And what's uh, also kind of crazy and coincidental is our first episode that we ever recorded was Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Yeah, totally. I remember. So this kind of, yeah, kind of lines up Kind of lines up, kind of fits in, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know. I love it. Um, so let's get to our new segment. We're going to talk about, basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to introduce each other to films that maybe we put off to the side or, um, you know, ones we just haven't gotten to. But mm-hmm. now we're going to force each other to watch them, right? Yeah. 
and we're going to reveal those titles and we'll we will have watched them by next episode so zach what film have you chosen for me to watch uh tarkovsky's stalker Ooh. i feel like uh it's a good one for you um it's it has a lot of very intense concepts but it's like very understated execution at times which is mm-hmm. nice um very strange tone and i i think you'll enjoy it like uh just the storyline i think i think it i think it's kind of down your alley you know but for me it was one that i saw in high school and like dish did not appreciate at all you know what i mean yeah it was like right yeah. when i was getting into movies and like you know it's just like eh whatever you know who cares yeah. and um <laughs> just never got around to watching it again because it's long right so i feel like the motivation to watch the long movie is good because now you're forced to get it in there you know what i mean it's true it's true it's not like yeah it is something i've put off to the side but um you know length is always a problem with us but if we're forced to watch something well i gotta sit down gotta watch it yeah gotta watch it you know it's like ah doing work (laughs) right now you know what i mean (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> gotta do this got to and I'll, I'll probably thank you in the end so um that's no, a good pick it's a good pick thanks thanks um the one i picked for you is a lot less sophisticated <laughs> yeah, that's fine <laughs> but uh it's it was on my top 10 of 2016 and it's just a fun that's just really fun it's it's not long like stalker but it's it's pretty short but a lot of fun, and that is Sing Street. Nice. Yeah, I don't know why I just like missed that that year. Just didn't happen I think for some reason, you know. Yeah, I think I think you'll enjoy it. It's just real, just a lot of fun. Good music, fun. Sit down, watch some uh, Irish kids like try and make an '80s band. Hell yeah! And uh, with some good killer 80s music so um nice i think you'll dig it no that's yeah. good because that's one that i like forgot about so it's like forcing yeah. me to come back around you know yeah exactly um no yeah just uh just have some fun with it don't don't uh i guess build it up too much for yourself but yeah, it is yeah. one that i just i um at the time it was a big surprise for me and i enjoyed it a lot and i think you will as well hell yeah so um yes those are the titles stalker and sing street we'll have watched those by next episode and uh share our thoughts then. hell yeah let's move on to our watch lists wait real Zach, quick what... oh what no twin peaks uh yeah that was actually gonna be my first thing to oh, talk okay. about. But i guess this is a perfect time this probably yeah. separate from the watch list right kind yeah a of... little more extended you know Ongoing. dialogue here I don't know what else to say to make this an actual segment other than um, <laughs> yeah, it's I've, fine. You know what? You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can't analyze the last three episodes. I've watched three. Okay. Uh, since we talked about so it. So what? Um, so seven was the last one you watched. So yeah, so I have eight next. So yeah, seven. I've watched seven so far. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm still digging it. It's great, you know. It's yeah. um, it's uh, definitely weird. Definitely, and it's weird. definitely, definitely tries my patience. I, mm-hmm. <laughs> you and I are both busy people, and to, it's not. It's something I have to make time for. I can't. I can't just pop it in because yeah, it just doesn't work like that. Like I need mm-hmm. to have time to think about each episode and to like take my time and oh, I got hours to kill now let me put in yes yeah, and totally. when i do when i do that it's worth it it's great um yeah i'm just I, like i said don't know what else to say other than just uh i'm enjoying it and um i think it's it still hasn't gotten to that point i think of where it's like oh i i i know where this is going to end up or anything like that mm-hmm. like i think it's still building definitely and and it's still laying down the puzzle pieces mm-hmm. very slowly but um, I one thing I will say though I'd love there's how many characters there are there's a yeah, lot of yeah it's characters. so sprawling it's like all over the place like 
like location yeah. wise and like so many characters yeah. from this location like it's great to see all the old characters back as well as just like a ton of new characters mm-hmm. um and it's something we talked about before but it's like this isn't just a quote unquote sequel to twin peaks it's like it's a culmination of david lynch's work i totally. feel like it definitely feels bring, that way yeah it like it's not just a twin peaks new season like it's a new david lynch project film mm-hmm. like in its own which is really cool totally so where did, what like major story wise like major plot points has happened in the next three like where'd you end off um well it has been probably a week since i last saw episode seven so i do have to think about it but um her name is escaping me but she just showed up laura dern's character (sighs) yes yes thank you diane dern's character Mm -hmm. yeah so she was in the last one yeah so she showed up which is pretty Um, crazy that's like a big deal in twin peaks yeah that's a big deal um plus laura dern's just fantastic so yeah totally always cool seeing her i didn't know that she was in it i just didn't know when so it was Mm -hmm. cool to actually see her um harry dean stanton showed up nice which was awesome love that harry dean yeah he was amazing um yeah i I, the plot is still sort of like i can't can't, it's hard for me to describe what's kind of going on it's a lot of um like there's all this stuff with shelly right and like caleb landry jones and amanda seyfried like is it all that stuff yeah some of that there's going that. on there's more of the um the big thing with um laura dern was her encountering oh yeah evil cooper cooper yeah so uh, fucking the, creepy the possessed cooper yeah. he was super creepy and that was a really good scene the scene where david lynch talks to him is also great yes that that was cool it's been a long time coop <laughs> <That's like, laughs> yeah uh yeah, that was good. Um, I'm trying to think of like what else. Where's D- Where's Dougie I- Jones at? So Dougie Jones still flying by the seam of his pants somehow. Mm. Um, wow, well, how no one is thinking this guy's absolutely crazy. But he was, I guess, with with him is the he's like sort of the central plot point at this point. Definitely, um, yeah. Um, he had some trouble at work. And then he was given those papers. He mm-hmm. found himself staring at the statue. And then the cops brought him home. And um, what was really cool was he he was forced to basically start looking at those papers. Yeah. And he sees all the And like... he sees like the little dots and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he like, which was actually really cool editing side note, because it was like following the paper down, like at a 3D angle. Totally. Which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and he like circles exactly and just looks like scribble. Mm-hmm. And then, so he, so he hands that into his boss and he's like, what am I going to do with this? And the boss like, like oh my, figures it. Oh my God, Dougie. <laughs> yeah, Dougie. Holy shit. You know? <laughs> yeah. And that guy is amazing. So, he's so good. Yeah. The boss. Yeah. And he sort of figures it out. It's like, oh, oh. so it's like, it's, I, I think it's also It's, it's kind of funny to see Dougie sort of like completely brain dead Mm -hmm. but also he's just like so successful with everything that he's doing yeah totally (laughs) he's just like like, everything's just perfectly stumbling through everything you know yeah like just with this amazing luck (laughs) yeah Tom (laughs) Sizemore too right yeah he was a few episodes back but it was cool cool seeing him yeah definitely Um, so he's clearly the guy who's lying in Mm -hmm. that in the work area there um yeah i don't know what else to say but it's it's killer the music's awesome uh totally yeah i love i love all the characters or i feel like they're constantly just throwing more characters and i'm sure that's eventually going to come to a head whether it's like they're gonna stop throwing characters at you but maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly just be prepared it's insane the amount of shit that they just keep adding like there's so many 
so many timelines and so many plots. Yeah, and all know? the stuff that's happening, like, in the bar, where they just, like, all these... I remember watching it week to week, just being like, who the fuck are these people? Like, everyone just being <laughs> like, this is the week where, like, something big's gonna happen. And, and like, big things happen, but then it's just like, right. what? <laughs> you know, like, who are these people? Like, Yeah, seriously. Yeah, excited to hear uh, what you have to say uh, next cast, you know what I mean? To get a couple... couple yeah. Different. I'm going to definitely catch some more before next and, one. And don't look and, at anything uh, about the next few, you know, don't Okay. Don't read up on them. I've tried not to do too much reading. When I first started, I was very excited and I did read some things, but then I found myself going through articles I didn't want to know any more about. Like I know something big's happening. It's mm-hmm. going to happen. Yeah. But I yeah, I'm avoiding stuff now. I don't want to don't want to know. Yeah, so sure. uh I'm just amazed too that like how much content there is. It's like, good insane. god. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Like, hours and hours and hours of content. Like this is which is it's cool because it's not like some short limited time like well, this is a limited series, quote mm-hmm. unquote. But usually that means like 8 episodes, 10 episodes. Yeah, it's 18 hours long. <laughs> like, 18 hours of content. Yeah, like, it's insane. That's a lot. 9 movies. So. <laughs> He's just made nine two-hour-long movies. Yeah, that's insane. Um, but yeah, I just I'm constantly impressed with the look of the film, the the film craft with mm-hmm. that. Like it's just like Lynch, dude. You still got it. Totally. Um, you gotta watch. And you, er, I'm sorry. You, you finish. Uh, just gonna say, I I feel like I'm in the hands of a master. I'm. I'm sitting back and letting him guide me through his vision, you know? Mm-hmm. It's very much like that. Like, you, you like, you know he's fucking with you. You, like, you could just Yo, picture yeah. him being like, <laughs> just like sitting. <laughs> Fuck oh, this is people. really going to drive him crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, after, um, after you finish, you got to watch some of that last disc. It is amazing. The all uh, the behind like the, the scenes footage true yeah definitely it's definitely so will. much just like raw footage of him working on the set and him just being like i'm gonna need a can of cream Amazing. corn and uh, <laughs> like all this like weird <laughs> shit and him explaining scenes where it's like and then this happens and there's whoosh, and it's it's real dark and then there's wind and then whoosh, and then uh, and he's just like a <laughs> like a confused old man just being like ah Ex- explain this like insane sequence you know what i mean that just like i don't know it's 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 really good it's really entertaining you do it's good insight you do a really good impression of him oh thank you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it sounds just like him it's funny um so yeah that's twin peaks i'm i'm excited to keep going and we'll yeah. talk more about it as i keep keep going more. you gotta you can't yeah. let it oh, slip away you know you gotta power oh, I through will. Yeah, I will for sure. Um, what what have you been watching? Um, I've watched a few things since the last episode. I saw um eighth grade. I really want to see that man. It's coming to it's coming here. I think next weekend. Yeah. But yeah, how'd you, what'd you think? I thought it was really good. I liked it a lot. It's uh nice. Yeah, I don't I don't have much negative to say about it. Like. It's just really enjoyable, pretty like simple in a lot of ways, but like not not as a negative, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Feel super honest. The characters feel real. The performances are good. Like it's funny. I don't know. It's 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 pretty. It's really good. Just solid. Yeah, I really really enjoyed it. I didn't know what to think. Does... I, I've never seen, or I I watched some after, but I had never seen like any of his stand up or anything oh really yeah I had, like i had heard of him but yeah i didn't like know what his style was like so it was interesting seeing it and then seeing it, it's like oh wow yeah it's kind of weird <laughs> like, oh yeah it's it's completely weird for him to to make a film like this like mm-hmm. it's just so out of his his normal talents yeah um which was one of my questions for you because i was i'm a big fan of his last stand-up mm-hmm. um it was really good um where he did like a solo it was basically a solo musical show it's like oh, you yeah. get music you you get comedy and 
It, that's main like the majority of his comedy is involves a lot of music. I yeah, think. totally. I think I that's watched thing. the one that was two ago. Okay, yeah, he, that's his thing. And he started off on YouTube. Mm-hmm. He was like a YouTube star. He started doing stand up. He's actually in the Big Sick. Oh yeah, at, which is it's just got like a little role in there. He's pretty good in it. It's funny, but um, yeah. So how do how did it feel like as a film because this is a guy who's never directed like a film before so mm-hmm. like did it feel like it was new did it or did it feel very natural and like organic to like the plot of the film yeah i thought i thought it felt pretty natural i'd say there's there's times where things are like heightened like there's some heightened stuff with the dad that's maybe like yeah. a little much but um yeah i mean i thought it, i thought it felt pretty like real like an honest look at you know hmm. what it's like now you know i don't know what it's like yeah. now but it felt honest <laughs> you know yeah it's kind of crazy that like this this young man stand up comedian has yeah. made a film about a a modern age like middle school girl going <laughs> through like adolescence like yeah totally it's weird it's pretty ballsy to do um mm. but and clearly he had something he wanted to say and it sounds like it it worked out like it paid off yeah you should you should definitely go see it it's re- it's really good it's very much worth going to see okay cool um how was the girl in it she Did was you... great yeah yeah i'm looking forward to it looks really good it's getting a lot of praise so mm-hmm. gotta check it out definitely um something else i watched let me pull up my letterbox diary here um so between our last episode and now um i went up to michigan for a family wedding so Mm -hmm. i caught some movies like on the plane um and one of those was uh loving vincent oh nice yeah, I didn't get to catch yeah, this last that's year. That's one that I just but, like um, slipped away. Yeah, totally. Same for me. Um pretty cool, like worth checking out. I mm. the the big selling point obviously is that every frame's a painting. Yeah. You know, that's the whole thing. Um and I really think that's like its most valuable asset. Like yeah. there's not much of a plot. Like there's a plot, but it it's it's very simple and um kind of deals with uh vincent van gogh that's how they pronounce it i've always said vincent van gogh mm-hmm. it's actually van van gogh um so it's a mi- common misperception uh misconception but um anyway so it's about his mysterious death and and what takes place after that which is kind of mm. cool and trying to figure out the mystery and this guy who's trying to deliver this letter um but anyway <laughs> Uh, the art is fantastic. It looks just like his work, and it's it's and different scenes sometimes take on different art forms. Like nice. there is like flashback scenes that are all like in black and white and like a different style. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. And they're all hand drawn. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, but the majority of the film in color like deals with like his actual style, and it looks just like his artwork. So it's really cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anyway, just a a. F- a, a, a movie worth checking out just for the fact that like every frame is a painting and it deals with like the mysterious death uh, of this like really good painter that we've all heard about so um in that respect worth checking out it's a good plane movie nice good movie to watch on the plane see so it seems like the animation is like so intricate you know small screen but i guess you're really close yeah uh well a lot of the film too is like they shot it it's like rotoscope well they shot it on cameras and they painted over it yeah a lot of the stuff Mm -hmm. um i didn't know there were some like big actors in it like um oh yeah yeah i had no idea yeah like uh and you can their their likenesses in there they're in the painting Mm -hmm. it's um (sighs) shusha ronan from oh nice she's Mm. in it um, I can't remember the others. There, there are people that you've seen before that, but they're not like huge name stars. Yeah, Trisha Ronan's probably the biggest one. Um, like the guy from Game of Thrones. Um, 
that doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of there's options There's a guy there. from Game of Thrones that's in it. He has a smaller part. I forget his name. But anyway, um, yeah, it's cool in that respect that, like, it actually had the, – they had the actors, like, play out the scenes, perform, and yeah. then they, like, painted over that and, like, extended the scenes with actual paintings. For sure. So that's pretty cool. Hell, Yeah. All right, what else I get? Um, I saw Three Identical Strangers. It's a film I want to check out. Mm. I would say that you can you can wait. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's definitely a very interesting story. But, I mean, the trailer alone is like, oh shit, I want to see that. Yeah. It's um. It's just like really weirdly done. Like, there's, they shoot, like, huh. reenactment kind of things in the beginning. Because, like, the beginning yeah. is, like, him telling the story about how he found out. He, like, went to college and he found out that there was someone who looked just like him because everyone thought he was this different guy. So they, like, shoot yeah. it, like, obscuring his face and stuff. And there's this whole sequence of him driving. And, like, I was like, oh, whoa, I wasn't expecting this. And it's because right. it's just not in the movie again. They just do it in the beginning and then that's it. And it's like, what? Like, just don't really? do not do that, you know? And then they're also like, it seemed like there was not enough old footage of them. There just like wasn't that much material for them to like use. So they're yeah. constantly reusing the same stuff. But it the way that they frame it is like reusing it at times where like they reveal something to you. So it ends up feeling like like a flashback and like a CSI episode or something. You know what I mean? Where it's oh, just really? like, and then this happened. It's like, bum, ba, da, bum, bum, ba, da, ba. and it's like cutting back to the stock footage and replaying clips and like zooming in on photos. And it's like, yeah, are you talking about that like thing that we saw 20 minutes ago? Like I've been watching the movie the whole time. Like I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, why are you showing me this? It's really weird. Huh. It's kind of a bummer because the story is very interesting. But they also, like, I don't know, make this whole point about, like, what, like, uh, well, I don't know if I should, I guess it's fine. Towards the end that, like, everyone <laughs> everyone looks at their similarities, but they should be looking at the differences, you know, like, between them. And that's, like, where uh-huh. everything stems from. And it's yeah. also, like, yeah, but, like, if that's the lesson, like, you didn't do that. Right. You know what I mean? You just, like, said what everyone should do, but you're perpetuating the thing that you said that they shouldn't do. Just mm. kind of like, huh? I don't know. I yeah. I still think it's, like, an interesting watch. Like, if it pops up on Netflix, it's, like, not, you know. If you're interested in the story, it's worth watching, but it's just not a very good movie. It could have been, like, a 25-minute, like short or i could have just read about it you know what i mean i've been like yeah wow look at this crazy article expose piece thing you know what i mean yeah it just kind of doesn't really justify itself feels like it's scrambling to try to fill the time interesting so it seems like a very sort of like roughly crafted documentary yeah i didn't think it was done very well uh, it's a bummer. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's one I'll hold off on then. Yeah. We'll Defin- try and catch in theaters. Worth watching um, like when it comes out. Like if you could rent it or if it's on some streaming service. Yeah. Which I'm sure it fucking will be. Like, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It's one of those sure movies, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Three Identical Strangers. Um. Another movie I watched on the plane was um, The Death of Stalin. Oh, nice. Yeah. How was this that? This is a movie I heard. I heard a lot about this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, I kept like putting it off, even though it was like available to me for rent and stuff. And I was like, I'm on the plane. Now's the time to do it. Yeah. And I'm it's really, really movie. glad. I, I'm really glad I did. Yeah. Have you seen this movie? No. I almost went to see it in theaters, but I ended up not going. It's... You got to check it out. I think mm. it's it's on Prime now for like four bucks. Nice. Easily worth the money, I think. 
Um, probably one of my favorite, probably up there was a, like one of my favorite like films this year. Oh, nice. Um, Very cool. Yeah. It's hilarious. I had no idea like how funny it was mm. going to be. Um, it's it's very funny even off the the very right off the bat in the first scene uh just like the comedic timing the the language it's all feels almost like a, they're improving a little bit mm-hmm. with it and it just but not in like a like run like on a, way not like a run on way like with Seth Rogen style mm-hmm. or anything like that like it's 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 own kind of yeah theatrical uh performances um, but it has a really good cast. It has um, has uh, Jeffrey Tambor for one. Um, I know that he's kind of not in good light right now, but he yeah. does a good job in it. Um, Steve Buscemi does a really good job. Nice, love that it's Steve. Like a major part. I haven't seen him in like such a big role in a long time. Yeah, like, he has a good, big, beefy role, and he does pretty good in it. Um, Matthew Palin is actually in it. Or Michael Palin, sorry. Oh, yeah, from Monty Python. From, like, yeah, which is, mm. like, oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, there's there's a long list of actors I can't recall off the top of my head. Um, they're more, like, obscure ones, but that those are the main guys. Um, like, Patty Co- uh, Considine. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you, like, you've seen him before. and mm, Hot Fuzz and stuff. Hot Fuzz, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really good, and I I actually really enjoyed. I didn't like think of this right off like when I first started watching it, but near like the halfway through, I was like, no one's doing an accent, which is really interesting because it all takes place in Russia. They're mm-hmm. all um, basically right under working for Stalin, and they have their like normal in real life accents. Yeah. Like, whatever their accent is in real life, they do that. So there's no, like, really bad, like, Russian accents or anything totally. like that. Like, that would just, ruin I, it. I re- yeah. I like that. I like I like that they, like, the American guys have their American accents. Whatever. It's it's a comedy. And so it totally doesn't feel out of place. It feels mm-hmm. natural. That's why it took me a while to realize it. But um, it feels fine. And I actually appreciate that they just, like, didn't do that. Like, they didn't force, like, the Russian accents. They yeah, just, totally. Yeah, that would have been a main aspect of the comedy, and they just took that out completely, mm-hmm. which I kind of respect that. Definitely. Um, Isn't it um, Armando Iannucci? Armando Ian- Iannucci, yeah. yeah. That he's a director. Yeah, he's good. Um, yeah, he is good. He's done like a lot of comedic stuff, and um, it's cool to see like him make this kind of movie. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And um, Basically, real quick, the plot of the film, obviously, death of Stalin. Stalin dies in the beginning. It's not a spoiler. Mm-hmm. It follows the what happens after that, like how it, the biggest part of the comedy is like these people are just still terrified of him even past death. <laughs> uh, like there, because Stalin just kills anyone that yeah. he doesn't like. So like. Anything that's against the motherland, anything that's like against the comrades of the Soviet Union, mm-hmm. if there's like one negative thing that's said, you're killed. So like they're constantly like trying to up each other, like on who's better, like who's the better like comrade, who's the better like patriot. Yeah, and that's like the whole thing. It's like it's very much like a an entourage uh, group of people that are just trying to like outperform each other and. Um, yeah, it's really really fun to watch. So, worth yeah, checking I got, out. Yeah, I got to sure. check that out. We've been meaning yeah. to watch it. Slip through the cracks. It's very funny. One, I think one negative thing I'll say about it is runs just a little too long. It feels a little too long. What's that? What's the TRT um, on that bad boy? It's an hour and forty seven minutes, so it's under two hours. Mm-hmm. But still, though, sometimes the sometimes end, movies can be ninety. Or an hour 40. You know yeah. I mean? Near the end, it's sort of like, okay, wrap it up. And there's like a couple of scenes back to back where it feels like, like it could have ended and it kept going. But it's such a minute thing. Like it's the comedy is so good. The acting is so good. Um, and it like it fits in the environment as well. Mm-hmm. Like the production design is spot on. Um, the only thing that sticks out, like I said, 
is like their accents. Like no one has a Russian accent. No one's speaking Russian, but whatever. It's a comedy. Yeah. So yeah, it feels feels like a classic comedy that would have come out of not this era. Almost like it would be seventies, eighties style mm-hmm. of this like group comedy stuff. So um, yeah. Anyway, Death of Stalin. It's on Prime now. Check it out. Is it free on Prime? Don't think so, just because it's a new yeah. release. Didn't know if you it just popped. It. Sometimes they just pop over, you know. Sometimes still I, still I, worthy of renting. Just was curious, you know. It's worth it's worth renting. Yeah. It really is. Worth the money. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah. Very chill, dude. Very chill. Very chill. What else is uh what else is next on your list? Um I watched um, The Apartment for the first time. Billy Wilder movie from 1960. Um, you got Shirley MacLaine. You got Jack Lemmon. You got um, What's-His-Face, who's in a bunch of stuff and is always a hard-ass. Uh, Fred McMurray. There you go. Um, yeah, this movie was great. I really haven't... I've seen Sunset Boulevard, and I think that's it in terms of Billy Wilder. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. you know been meaning to watch some more of his stuff and uh yeah it's uh very enjoyable um do you know what it's about no i don't i was actually very surprised i i never knew anything about it i just heard it was really good you know um but yeah it's like about a guy who works in this like giant building with like 30,000 people or something and his uh his bosses use his apartment to basically just like go cheat on their wives so like okay he's kind of like forced into like you know like keeping like booze stocked for them and like having like making it like a place like where the higher ups can come hang out which then in turn like is getting him like job like you know, priority, like kind of getting promoted in lot ahead of other people. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty dark. I don't know why I was expecting it to not be dark because Sunset Boulevard is pretty dark, but, um, did they just re did someone just remake this movie? I don't know. Maybe. Cause I feel like I saw a trailer that was based on that exact same premise. The apartment remake. It didn't look very good, though. But I feel like it was based off that exact same premise. Maybe this sort of took that base idea and like did something different. The Loft? Poss- yeah, possibly. Five married guys conspire to secretly share a penthouse, a place where they can carry out hidden affairs and indulge their fantasies. Fantasy yeah, come that's to night it. Where they, when they discover a dead body unknown in the loft maybe i'm thinking of that movie pretty pretty a, similar like setup it's got a pretty terrible meta score of 24 that that makes that's a pretty bad <laughs> yeah we got uh, carl urban who else you got in here it's got a good cast james, james marsden. marsden who the fuck is wentworth miller Oh, that guy. <laughs> I never, what a fucking name. Never heard of him. Eric Stone huh. Street. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe there was another one also, but... Yeah, maybe not. I but, feel like it was newer than 2014, but yeah. anyways. Um, yeah, it's... uh, It was really good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, nice. Yeah. Had had it for a while on Blu-ray and just never watched it, so... Fuck it, popping it in, bud. Pop it in, why not? Good stuff, dude. Um, I'll throw one more in there and say, this showed up on Netflix, and I was like, I'm going to watch it, because I never watched it. Uh, Denny Villeneuve, his film, Enemy. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You've seen this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is I. I love Denny Villeneuve. He's, yeah, he's one of my favorite boy. directors right now. I just I love him. I love his work so much, and uh, I was like, well, I gotta watch this. Jake Gyllenhaal, 
great actor gotta check it out and uh yeah really glad i did another movie of his that i really really enjoy Mm -hmm. um has some elements that i had to think about you know like afterwards about like afterward like didn't make sense or like it was just very strange Mm -hmm. like the spiders everyone knows the spiders yeah there's a lot of spider shit in there um but i don't know i i really liked the film it's very very watchable it's very watchable and Mm -hmm. the the tension is so good and jake gyllenhaal does this great job of playing these two different parts of of him of himself Mm -hmm. really um playing two characters that are just it's a it's an interesting concept too like having this guy this lonely guy find this actor in a film that he he's watching that looks exactly like him and sort of like trying to track him down and um it goes into we could like dive in and really analyze this film I'm just not gonna do that right now but i did read some stuff on it and i find it very interesting and if you like any of Denny Villeneuve's other films, I think Enemy is a good one to check out too. Yeah, it's good it's really stuff. Good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed the cinematography. Uh, looked really good. The um, just the way the pacing worked, the editing was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And it was just like a wash in this like yellow color the whole time. And I always totally. like. Sometimes I like when films like yeah, use just like lean into the weird like color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like lean into the color. I like it. Uh, so yeah, Enemy, good film. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's uh, free on Netflix if you have Netflix. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's it for my watch list. Um, I guess I, I can quickly say I watched um, Legacy: The White Tail Deer Hunter, the Jody Hill movie for netflix yeah how was how was that it's a bit of a disappointment um Mm. there's definitely some stuff that's really funny in it uh josh brolin's good in it the kid's good in it danny mcbride is good like all the performances are good but it just kind of suffers it feels a little rushed there's way Mm. too many songs like there's literally a song like kicking in an ending and then like three lines of dialogue and like another song kicks in and they're like walking through the woods and there's like lens flares and like it's like all right i think we can tone down the like musical montages a little um and it's very <laughs> one short. too many uh musical montages yeah and it's like i know he loves those based off like eastbound and down and observing report and stuff like there's a lot of them in it yeah. but but there's like a weight to his other stuff that's like unexpected that comes out and really works i feel like that this yeah. one just kind of doesn't have it's just a little more gotcha. like flat you know but not not bad like worth a watch you know yeah if, if you like his other stuff there's fun there's funny stuff in there i do i like his other work mm-hmm. um the trailer looked funny yeah but i'm not in a rush to see it it's kind of like i i wanted to see it but forgot about it because i always forget about shit that gets buried on there but um yeah it was a good like i was like looking around and it was like 11 and i was like maybe i can squeeze in another movie and i looked for too long and then just was like oh yeah whatever pop it on you know it's like oh yeah yeah, okay you know it's good one of those you fall asleep i fall asleep you know yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) sounds good all right cool um all right that will do it for our watch list oh i'm so glad i looked because i almost forgot to talk about this again i'm glad i actually wrote this down um sharp objects oh nice i haven't seen the newest one but i've watched the first three. Oh, sweet so you oh mm. yeah i'm glad we could talk about this um i'm i was very excited for this show i like i really liked um the previous show that he made big little um, lies yes big little lies big fan of that show i loved that last year mm-hmm. and if we had included if we had included miniseries or like shows yeah. into our top 10 or whatever would have been up there for sure like i it was a fantastic show so well made great acting looks amazing anyway so i was very excited for sharp objects amy adams um with 
with a based on a book by Gillian Flynn mm. who did Gone Girl. Yeah. Uh, so it had all these good things working for it, and so far it's paying off. Like I, I think it's, I'm really, I'm really enjoying the show. I th- it's taking its time, um, on its pace, but I, I feel like it's going to pay off in the end because. Yeah. It's it's supposed to be a mini series, so there's going to be some kind of big reveal. There's going to be some kind of wow ending, mm-hmm. and um, I'm totally expecting that. And we are currently halfway through the season, uh, four episodes th- so far, I think, right? Yeah, four episodes. Um, and I, I really am, am enjoying seeing Amy Adams play like a darker role. Yeah, well. she's great. Um, she's she's just a an amazing actress she's Definitely. fantastic and um to see her in this kind of role is different for her and uh, i think she's doing a good job and um i just sort of like i like southern gothic style things as well like mm-hmm. i like mystery stuff and i really it, even though this technically takes place in the midwest it feels like a southern for sure gothic mm-hmm. i mean they even have southern accents and stuff I, yeah i don't know how they really talk in minnesota but it's kind of it's like a I, like I thought it was in Missouri. Southern. Missouri. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I've never been to Missouri, but I know from Illinois that like, it doesn't feel like the South here, like in Chicago and like West and just South, but like Southern Illinois feels more like the South than the Midwest from my experience. Interesting. Like okay. it, it, it gets a little more terrain and like a little, everything's a little more sparse yeah so it, it yeah. definitely has more of a southern you know vibe which is pretty close to i don't know where they're at in missouri but you know we share a thing with jake similar yeah yeah um yeah so i i don't i think the town is fictional mm-hmm. it's called wind gap i think it's like a fictional little small town um but yeah it's sort of a like these murders are happening in this town and she's there to report on them. She returns home and starts to encounter her dark past. And um, I'm enjoying to see where that, where that's going. And, yeah. Um, it's been really good. I think there's, there's a lot of really cool editing that I think on paper in different hands would not be good. You know what I mean? Agreed. Like Completely. the way that they're cutting it, they're, getting a lot across just in edits that take no time like it feels very um it feels very like free form but also like economical with like the way it uses time like that you know what i mean how they're just yeah. kind of like showing you little glimpses and you're kind of like piecing everything together but it's not like winky it's just kind of natural and it's happening all the time and i think it also plays into her character and the anxiety obviously and like everything to do with that and um it's really really good and it makes me want to watch big little lies because i never saw that i can't recommend it enough i was it is it's very different from this show Mm -hmm. but it it has john mark valet the director sort of has like his similar vibe Mm -hmm. he's really good with memory stuff and i think that's why he they he he was picked for the the director of this series because he's really good with um like people do flashbacks but he does it in a very unique way where it doesn't feel like um doesn't feel like a gimmick like it's part Mm -hmm. of the storytelling like memory kind of shifts through what's what's current and what's past and what you know and this show does a lot of that like flashbacks there's a lot of them and mm-hmm. to do them in like a unique way like this and they're sort of becoming as the show goes on like they're becoming more frequent and like quicker flashes and yeah more I, graphic I like as well me- more graphic i feel like that's how memory works right mm-hmm. like in when you're just sort of walking especially if you go back to your old hometown where you're from you're just you see quick glimpses of the past uh in your head and it does a it, the the editing of the show does a good job relaying like amy adams character like what she's feeling what she's mm-hmm. remembering and um yeah i think that's just it's really well done yeah i'm glad i watched it i was um 
kind of a pooper and just was like, I didn't like Dallas Buyers Club, so then it was like, eh. I didn't need to watch that guy's movies. And I'm glad I thought I Dallas came Buyers around. Club was... Sorry to interrupt you. No, it's okay. That was... I was done. Um, uh, I was just going to say, like, I... I'm surprised, like, you didn't like that. I, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind Dallas Buyers Club. I thought it was a little much, personally. Yeah. No, that's another discussion. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not like a great defender of it or anything. No, no. But, um, it, I mean, it's fine. I didn't necessarily. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it was yeah. weird. I'm. I'm basically. I'm glad I came around on this guy, and it makes me want to watch um, Big Little Lies also because I really am enjoying Sharp Objects uh, quite a bit. Yeah, dude. You you really should check out Big Little Lies. Looks great in HD. Like. It looks like a four, like it needs to be like seen on four K. But even just like HD streaming, like looks fantastic. Um, Hell yeah! It has like a really, really good color to it, mm. and just great performances all around. And um, yeah, anyway, it's another mystery type thing in a town. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Sharp Objects. It's on HBO currently playing. You can catch up and watch the new season or the new episodes every Sunday at nine, I believe. It's good shit. PM Eastern, that is. Yeah. So, real quick, before we yeah. get into this review, yeah, got a little something that we can maybe chat about just for a second here. Okay. So last time we had this movie pass conversation, right? Uh, this is a good thing to bring up. So it's a good thing to bring up. Movie Pass is basically fucked. So when this yes. movie came out, they got fucked. And I was gonna ask you how it affected you on this. <laughs> so yeah, I was gonna tell you my my process that the many stages I went through. So it, oh my god, it's um it's on Sunday. I'm gonna go see it, and it's gone. Mm. It's just like not available. It's not on the front page of Movie Pass. I can't find it in the app. Eventually, I find it, like, when you search Mission Impossible, it's, like, yeah. all of... It's, like, the bottom of, like, all of them. Oh, my you God. You know, it's, like, put that shit at the top. Where is M Mission Impossible 3 playing for Movie Pass right now? You're clearly <laughs> hiding this. You know what I mean? And then you click oh, they, on oh, it. Oh, yeah. You click Definitely on it. Definitely hiding it. And it's grayed out everywhere in Chicago. There's one theater in the, oh. in the like, the suburbs that is playing it. Far away. And it's like, fuck that, man. Like, that's bullshit. So yeah. then I get some no email from them saying, not mo every movie is going to be available at every movie theater and surge pricing is enacted. Like, we're going to do that uh -huh. today. So I was like, fuck. So that's why I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go tomorrow. Because in the email, they're like, we're trying to get people to go during the week. You know what I mean? And then that'll balance out. out. That'll, like, make the movie theaters happy because we're, like, spreading people across this, like, whole concept. So, like... And we're out of money. Yeah, that as well. <laughs> so, also, so, literally, everyone must have taken their word for it because Monday, it's down. Completely down. Like, I go... Oh my God. I check at work in the morning to make sure. I, like, text... I was going with my roommate, TJ, so I was like all right, TJ, you want to go, like, 7.30 show? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. Check on the app. It's there. And then the thing is, though, I check on the app. I can't go see Mission Impossible at 7.30. But I can get a free ticket to Mamma Mia, here we go again, at 7.20, uh, and go uh -huh. into Mission Impossible. So that was the plan. Uh, so <laughs> then I get to the theater, and I'm walking in and I go, oh, I better check in to the movie pass, you know? So I'm pulling yeah. it up as I'm walking and it just says no theater or like no show times of this. And I was like, what? Or like something that sounded really weird when I clicked on the theater. Yeah. So I like close it, open it, same thing, close it, open it, same thing. And I was like, all right, you can go in. I'm going to like restart my phone and like see because it didn't feel right, you know? And it was so you thought it was just like a you thought it was just like a problem with the app. Yeah, but no, it was down again because I, because yeah. I'm assuming everyone went okay. We'll wait till Monday, and then on Monday everyone fucking went. You know what I mean? And it just like crashed them again. So now I was like, well, fuck! I gotta buy this ticket. 
And I was like, you think they'll reimburse me? And then I was like, well, they won't be able to reimburse me if I buy the no. ticket for Mission Impossible, especially because it's not available on the app. Because I have, the last time it didn't work, they reimbursed mm-hmm. me. I was, but I was like, I don't know, should I buy the Mamma Mia ticket? But I already felt guilty about buying the Mamma Mia ticket in general because I don't want to give money to Mamma Mia. But I've seen everything right. else. And Hotel Transylvania 3 has no similar show times. The only one that also does is blind spotting. And I kind of want to see blind spotting. You know what I mean? So I'm not right. going to use it on that. But I decided to not. I decided to just get the Mission Impossible ticket and say, fuck it. Okay. But then after the movie, it's back up again. And I can go see Mamma Mia. But then this oh. morning, it's not. This morning, well, it's you know fucked. about what. You know about like what's going on, right? Like, yeah, they're like they're out. literally, they're out. They're fucking out of money. Yeah. Like the days of movie pass are very limited. I don't think you're going to have, yeah, movie pass for much longer. It's super bogus because I already paid. I paid right. ahead. I'm not paying month to month. I paid for a whole year. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm just they fucked. don't have the, they don't have the yeah you're fucked. They don't have the cash to front you anymore. They don't no. They don't have money to load up on those cards anymore. They're out of money. They're looking for funding. Like who's gonna I fund don't that? Think that you... Nobody. They're looking. They're... No one is. But they're looking for people to fund it. And uh, I think I I think by the end of this year it's gonna be gone. Like I don't think you're gonna get your full year's worth. Definitely not. Personally, to be honest, yeah. already definitely paid itself off though. If I actually bought all those movie tickets. Right. So how much? How much did you spend? A hundred dollars. Okay, you've seen a lot of movies yeah. since then. All right, real quick, let it, me let me see. So it's already paid itself One, off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, seven, eight. I mean, it already probably has at eight, and that's like since June. Nine. Ten. Yep, there's ten. Since mid May I've seen enough movies. Yeah. So So I've had it I've off, had it for a while. So okay. Still a bummer. Like everyone kinda knew like it It's way too good model, to be true. It was, it, it's it yeah, it's they're not making money. Like literally the business is not making money. Yeah, literally every time I heard about it. Because Sean had it, like, he got it right away. He was like, yes, I'm doing that immediately, you know? So yeah, I don't, I don't blame him. He, for the entirety of the time he had an idea, and he was like, why do you not have it? You got to get it now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you got to yeah. take advantage of this now. And then I got it and literally was telling everyone, it's like, get in now because you're fucked later. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was totally. thinking that they would at least uphold it. Because when they started making changes to the plans, it was only for people month to month or signing yeah. up from then on. Like, everyone who had right. paid already, yeah, d- it didn't change their plan at all, you know? Mm. So I was like, mm-hmm. you got to buy in now because then you're locked gonna, in for, like, a year. It's going to go up. Right. Yeah. The worst part about this is, too, girlfriend's birthday is this week. I was going to get uh. her the movie pass. Oh... Uh. I was going to, yeah. like, pre-buy a year of movie pass, you know? And it's like, well, fuck, can't do that shit now. <laughs> like, Zach, wh- I, can't, I can't recommend that you do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, it just can't be done, you know? Yeah. It be done. Uh, it's nuts. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy that it's come into this, but it's sort of something everyone's been kind of seeing for a while. Like, it, we knew it wasn't going to last long, like, forever, mm-hmm. but... Um, yeah, we got to give credit where credit's due. It one great thing about Movie Pass is like it's allowed people who normally wouldn't go to the movie theater to go to the movie theater, right? Yeah. And the theater was kind of dying off. The cinema was dying, and I'm happy for Movie Pass. I'm yeah, I'm happy that they were able to get people to go to the theaters into the yeah. seats and get people interested in movies that way cuz like I was scared for a while that like movie theaters were going to die out completely. Yeah. You know, and 
so now it's sort of started this whole um like subscription services for all these other theaters like yeah because everyone started it up to compete but then movie pass is gonna die so then all the do you think all those will still be around there will they just go fuck it that's dead who knows i think um the reason that they are around is because of movie pass to compete with movie Mm -hmm. pass but like i think cinemark might still have theirs but like uh amc stubbs list stubbs a list they Mm -hmm. just started their whole thing that's to compete with movie pass for sure yeah but like will they still have it i mean do they need to probably not but like at least i still think it's cool to have because it still gives people incentive to like oh i get discounts on these movies and i get all this other shit with it Mm -hmm. or whatever you're still going there and you're buying concessions they're still you know you're forcing you're not forcing but you're allowing people to go there for cheaper and while they're there they're gonna buy popcorn and shit yeah it's just so, uh yeah because like I think it's I, good most times i go to the movie now movies i get something because i'm not paying for a ticket right that being said the amc thing is cool and these are all cool but the thing movie pass had on them is that it wasn't restricted to an amc or a cinemark or you know a regal yeah no so like yeah, yeah so it's like super cool I don't know. It's just, it's just so spoiled now. Like, oh, I can't I go see movies for free at the music box anymore. What a bummer. Know. You know, but it's You're... like, really, I should never have been able to do that. You never, <laughs> like, yeah, You're, but it's ruined it. You're very, you're you're very spoiled right now, and that was something that just never should have been. Yeah, like that never should have because now been around. If I want to do that, because Regal doesn't have one, I don't think. AMC has one. Regal, I don't know if they have a subscription service. They have their club that you yeah, can join, but I don't which gives you it's... like discounts. Mm-hmm. But it's not like a monthly thing. Yeah. You know? So AMC is the only one around me that would work with that. Mm. But it's twice as expensive. And it's yes. only three movies a week or a month. A week? Uh, a week. A week. Which is three movies fine. A week. Three That's movies enough. a week is fine. But that's the, a more it's realistic the, it's the twice as expensive. Charge. That's like yes, you're paying twice as much for less than half, and it's restricted to one chain. Which like around me, there's the AMC downtown, like in the loop, that is a pain in the ass to go to, or there's one yeah. outside of Chicago. Those are the only AMCs. Yeah, they're, they're downtown or they're not in the city. So it's not worth getting for you. Yeah. Which it's I only go worth to the getting one outside it, of the city because it's a yeah. short drive. But there's also Regal five minutes away from my house or less. It's only worth <laughs> like, getting the AMC Stubbs A-list if like that is your main theater. Like if you – basically if you're loyal to AMC and they are the closest you go to an AMC the most, 100% hands down worth it. For me, there are AMCs – there are like several throughout Orlando, mm-hmm. but – None of them are, like, the main theater I go to. They're far away. I have Cinemark next to me, and the next closest is Regal. Mm. So, not worth getting. Um, Cinemark Club, totally worth it for me. Yeah. Nine nine bucks a month. You get free. It, it, it's still more than Movie Pass, but it's still, I can reserve seats ahead of time. It's $9 a month. I get 20% off uh, yeah. concessions. Mm-hmm. And I get one free movie ticket. Um Per month and no online fees yeah so because really there's it's guaranteeing you go to one movie a month and it's the price yeah. of the ticket of the movie so it right 100 percent makes sense to go to yeah and all other movies if like, i've used up my free one for that month or whatever mm. they're all discounted anyway so they're all yeah. eight bucks no matter mm. what and that's insane like yeah. that's still really cheap yeah, like the surge um, thing that Movie Pass did. There's mm-hmm. a like a more local theater here in Logan called Logan Theater that is like kind of a second run thing, but sometimes plays first run stuff. And um they were playing Sorry to Bother You and at mm-hmm. 10 p.m. last night, the surge price on Sorry to Bother You, which has been out for over a week or two weeks maybe was five like fifty 
And tickets are $8 at the theater. And it's like, the 10 o'clock Sunday show of Sorry to Bother You? Is that, Mm -hmm. like, busy that there's a surge that's the vast majority of the ticket price? Like, it's just bogus. It's just, like, very obviously desperate, you know? Right, They're fucked. right. They're fucked for sure. Yeah, they're they're fucked. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Um. Let's yeah. move on. Didn't but, mean to uh, make it a whole thing, but it. No, it's it fine. Was... It's. I'm glad you did because it was. It's worth discussing because this is a part of movie history right now. Yeah. Like, and it also you know, like heavily. It's, it's crazy. Heavily factored into me going to the movie that we're going to talk right. about. <laughs> right. Um, let's move on to our non-spoiler segment of Mission Impossible Fallout. There cannot be peace without first a great suffering. The greater the suffering, the greater the peace. The end you've always feared is coming. Blood will be on your hands. I prayed to God that it wasn't true. Solomon Lane escaped in Paris. And now the world is at risk. This is the CIA's mission. You use a scalpel. I prefer a hammer. is a bad idea is it ever a good one honestly he's not just some observer he's an assassin i don't trust anybody outside of this room you go rogue he's been authorized to hunt you down and kill you that's the job no hard feelings which way betty turn left what are you waiting for? I'm jumping out a window. What what format did you see this movie in? 2D. Normal. Just like a regular 2D theory. Yeah. Okay. I I threw out the extra cash to see this in true IMAX. Nice. And uh I'll just say totally, totally worth it. Yeah. You gotta see it in IMAX. Just for the experience. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about um, just our general thoughts. I don't want to spend too much time in non-spoilers. So let's just general thoughts and then we'll move on to spoilers. So, sure. Um, what would you think of the movie? I thought it was good. I liked it a lot. Um, uh, my main criticisms would be that it was a little long. And mm. by that point, like the the last segment, I think got like a little goofy like the last big set Mm. piece. But Mm. before that, I was just like all in on this thing. Just fucking love it. Like there's a lot of really good stuff. I think it, they, it's hitting a really nice tone where they definitely know how like outrageous it is. And they're like playing with it and having fun, but it doesn't feel like overly stupid. And it kind of like even though it's always like a plan and a plan and a plan you know what i mean like yeah. you can always count on someone having an alternate plan that like yes. ends up winning even if it's good or bad that's just going to happen like the entire movie you know what i mean yeah but like i think there were a few times where it did kind of subvert what i think was what i thought was going to happen um yeah. which is nice but um yeah yeah i thought it was a lot of fun for sure I feel like this movie, for me, feels like the mastery of its own franchise. Yeah. Like, um, I think they even say, like the director and stuff in some interviews, they, I think, um, like Tom Cruise even said, like in the fourth film in Ghost Protocol uh, is when the franchise was found its identity, you know? Yeah, like, for sure. One, two, and three were all sort of different, but four really fell into like this nice groove and they... They continue with that same energy through the fifth one, Rogue Nation, mm-hmm. and into this one. And I feel like it's really found its footing. This is like, it found its footing. They got the recipe right. They were like, add a little salt, little pepper, right. and then... It knows what it is, and but at the same time, it 
there's a silly element to it. It's a spy film, but it's also grounded like with its characters. Yeah. It's like great characters and it's it's um story driven action. Mhm. And that's what I really like about this movie. I get into my opinion, I loved it. Nice. I loved it. Um I think it's the best one out of all them films. I feel like they've always gotten better and better and this one's sort of like it feels like a mastercraft of the franchise. Like they've all sort of been just like fun films that are like, you know. Yeah. Always always good to watch, great action stuff. But this feels like a whole other level compared to the other ones. Like incredible action, like I said story-based action um that are driven from these characters and the story itself and the plot. It's not just pointless action for no reason. Like there's motivation behind them. Mm-hmm. There's these great character arcs. Um, and then the, the skill level of the film in this, like just the directing, the cinematography, um, just everything about it. The score was amazing. The score I thought, was cool, like in yeah. this one. Um, it was a little zimmy at times, but for the most was, well, part, very good. It was very Hans Zimmer. In fact, I felt like it, a lot of it sounded like the dark Knight. A lot of the more like somber moments or like yeah. moments where they're like planning and it's like pushing in. Yeah. Like, it felt, well, it had a lot of like droning sounds, yeah. but it also had like, it played on the drums, mm-hmm. the spy drum to yeah. the, <laughs> a little bit. And yeah. Yeah. Well, I liked that a lot. Yeah. I, it was overall, cool. the score is great. Definitely. Um, and just the biggest thing of this movie, Tom, Cruise, and this is why I got this beer. Dirty little freak. <laughs> He's absolutely out of his mind. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. And how often can you say like this billionaire actor is literally putting his life on the line for the entertainment of us, like mm-hmm. for us? It's like, amazing. It, I think it, it's incredible. It kind of har- harkens back in a way. Like they feel very modern, but. I like that they um, they're like depending on the stunts. It's spectacle, you know what I mean? Like, yes, it's absolutely. not gonna have the same impact if it's not real. So let's fucking do it. You know what I mean? And I exactly. think that mentality they is know really that. refreshing in a movie like that. Even though it's like I don't know, Rogue Nation was however many years ago. Like, and I think that's yeah. carried through. But it's just something nice to see the like attention and i'm sure that there's like it's cross cut with real and a bunch of you know composite like it's mostly real and and um according to some interviews and stuff like if tom cruise has almost this obsession Mm. with making sure that you know that that's really him and their camera is set wide like when he's hanging from the helicopter there's lighting on his face when he when he jumps out of the plane, like they're making sure that you know he's really there because that sells it. He you really know? is. He's really doing that. Yeah. And when you know that, it's just like that's part of the spectacle. It's just like totally. Oh my god, it's insane. It's you cool. Know, like, it's like what it's these really movies cool. should be doing. And yeah, I feel like a lot of more recent action movies. I'm just always bored during the action. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. the other things are why I'm there. Like, I, I don't like it because it's just like, I don't know. It's just like a bunch of like the fucking ending of like bat. Not that this is a great example, but like Batman Superman. It's just like, what is even going on? Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's just right. like, like, I feel like a lot of modern action just kind of like. And it feels very fake. It's like it's obligatory screen. and they're not like really putting any care into how it's like, like crafted as you're seeing it. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But him being in these scenarios like really selling it really Mm -hmm. makes the action good and i think it's also just aside from that executed well i think the movie looks really good too there were so many cool shots like those shots right after the opening credits were of the airport where it's just like really fast like arm on a car driving and it just like him driving really fast and just pushes right in and you can see that it's him driving even though it's just him driving fast in a big lot it's like that works you know what i mean like amazing it's funny and it's good (laughs) yeah i agree it's so good 
And that's yeah, that's just something this franchise is like no one else is doing that mm-hmm. to this to this level especially. Like it's just raising the bar every single time. And I really do think that this is perhaps one of the best action films ever made. Really? In yes. Like it's all claim. In terms of in terms of its action, it's so well done. And to have someone so dedicated to like actually doing their stunts, there's no playing with shots, no playing with your mind. You see these wide IMAX shots, which another reason you have to go see it in IMAX. Those scenes where you just have that full frame holy shit you're looking down at tom cruise and he's literally dangling (laughs) from a rope over mountains it's like crazy yeah so yeah i i really liked it and again another reason that just makes it so good is like it's all grounded it all serves the story there's there are a couple sequences we'll talk about that felt like they probably did it just for the spectacle Mm -hmm. but the majority of it was very story driven like the reason they're doing this the reason they're in this situation is because they're doing this and um that i really really like and that's what makes it for me like makes it a really good blockbuster totally i heard i haven't looked into this but i was told today that the writing process for these movies stems from the set pieces I believe that. Yeah, which makes complete sense. Like Tom Yeah. Tom Cruise is like, I wanna fucking dangle from a helicopter and then like crash in one or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they go, Okay, yeah. like how how do we like make that work? How do we get you to know? that? And um for a movie like this though, it's like, yeah. Cause really, what the fuck do I care about this like guy with a beard who has like plutonium? You know what I mean? Like like I really don't give a shit. Like, what are you there for? You know what I mean? To see Tom Cruise do yeah. some fucking crazy shit. You know, like. But you have that, but also there is the reason why. Like, they, because you get into it, you know. Like I, I'm just You're saying, right. like that's not why you go, but it, of course. it is justified while watching it. Like it, right. it doesn't right. necessarily detract that process. It doesn't seem like for me. No, not at all. Um, and another another thing about this film too, which is really interesting in terms of the entire franchise, like this is the only like f- like real sequel. I feel like you know, like mm-hmm. they all stand on their own. Definitely, this is a direct. This is absolutely a direct sequel of Rogue Nation. You have the same. I kind of wished I watched and the repercussions of that Rogue Nation again before I saw it because I was assuming it wasn't going to be really. I was just like, oh, it'll probably be like pretty. Yeah, you know. Did you see any of the trailers? I saw one once, but I didn't want to okay. watch it a bunch because I didn't want, you know. Yeah. It had some of the same characters, so I was like, oh, there's going to there's gonna be some of the same ones in this. So. Mm. Um, but yeah, I didn't know how much it would tie in. It totally did. It felt like almost like the culmination of yeah. all the films. Totally. There's callbacks to even the first one, the second one, mm-hmm. um, like little uh, hints and stuff. And um. We'll get more into that later, but it, it definitely feels like it, it could end here. I w- I, I kind of don't want it to. No, but totally I, not. Um, Is that the could. plan? I We don't know. There's no plan yet. Yeah, just keep but fucking like... milking that cow, man. The thing is, every time I'm like, oh, they're making another one? And I go, yeah. oh, maybe it'll be good. And then I go see it and I go, yeah, show is good. <laughs> you know? And then I, I like, forget yeah, how good, good they are. You know what I mean? I feel like it's just sneaked up on everyone. Like, it's one of the best action franchises ever. Definitely, like, hands most down. consistent. Like, it's just very uh, rarely raising the bar. Yeah, very rarely are the second three widely considered better than the first three. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, I think that's, they are. like, not a thing that happens. <laughs> you know? I think this is the best one, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. I I need to see Rogue Nation again cuz I re- I remember it very fondly. Rogue Nation's really good. Yeah. Really really good. I, I watched, like that. That's the one I with watched the flute. it a couple days before I watched 
I watched it, mm-hmm. so it was like a nice. That's the one with the cool one. like opera flute gun, right? Oh, it's yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's best, so good. One of the best. And also the weird like record player thing in the beginning. Is that yeah. the one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is where the the guy with the beard. That's where he came from. He's mm-hmm. the he's the villain in that. one. Yeah, totally. I remembered he was in it, so, but I just yeah. don't remember like all. You know, yeah. I was just like when it was starting, I was like. Yeah, I probably should have watched that. <laughs> no, we'll watch it again now. Yeah. Like it's it's. Did you totally get those four Ks? No, I I had just bought the Blu-ray set before they announced the four. Oh yeah, I think we talked. About yeah, so I'm like, eh, it's fine. Yeah, I'm not. I just bought the Blu-ray set. I um a few months back, I rewatched all of them. Mm-hmm. So, I it was they're all they were all pretty clear in my head by the time I watched this because I wanted to be i was excited for this one yeah, so, yeah um i wanted to be prepared and i just wanted to rewatch all of them it had been years since i'd seen like the first one the second one um yeah. be very curious to watch so, two again it's it's pretty bad dude <laughs> it's yeah. pretty bad i talked about it on the show when yeah. i was watching them all no, i remember but uh yeah it's bad at the same time I kind of want to watch it again too, just because like it's so outrageous. Yeah, totally. But in my opinion, it's the worst one out of them. But, Seems uh, to be the general. It has some good. Is. Yeah, but it has some good iconic stuff in it. I like. I can say I'm a fan of the franchise, and that being said, you know, I think it's a bad movie. I still like. I have a fondness for it. Yeah, so, totally. You know. Um. But anyways, um. Let's let's get into. What do you think? Any last thoughts before we get into spoilers? Um. Hmm. Ving Rhames is good. Henry Cavill yeah. is a fucking beefcake hunk, man. That guy oh my is God. a fucking piece of meat hunk. <laughs> like, yeah, like seriously. Such a thick, wide man that is just Dude, chiseled he's superman yeah he's fucking but superman. he's like way bigger than he was as superman he looks like a giant in this movie like he looks like uh i don't know like a frank miller character he is <laughs> you giant, know what i mean dude. just like super broad and, like, you, ever thick see... arm. you saw man from uncle right no i never did oh you should check it out yeah he's that's like similar spy type mm-hmm. film but more comedic it takes place in the 60s i've heard it's good he's big in it is it's it's entertaining um he's big in that but then um he even looks small next to what's his name the other guy in that movie i don't know yeah i don't remember damn it he was in. he was in sorry to bother you army hammer oh okay army hammer looks even bigger than him so it's like damn Damn, Tom Cruise is pretty small, <laughs> which we knew, but like that would ruin our perception of him, I think, if we saw him together. Anyway, um, yeah. Any last thoughts? No, I think we covered most of it. Yeah. Alec Baldwin's kind of outrageous, but still fun. Like, for the yeah. most part, everything that was outrageous was fun, also. I think maybe not for me is closer to the end but like Mm -hmm. there's like a heightened sort of like taking things i mean there's serious things that they're talking about but it just sounds so funny at times just like wait where's the plutonium you know what it just like you know it's like it's (laughs) it's silly but like yeah it it the tone i think they find they like really nailed in a sense like even the tones the opening great. credits are amazing they're amazing they're so good like they're it, amazing the really intense score and it's literally just fire there's a wipe like every second and it's just it's like the flare. giant like text and it's just like such an action movie opening and it was like yes you know what i mean like dude it's iconic it's like that mission impossible spy action iconic opening mm. rogue rogue nation had the same thing yeah totally I feel like this I one it. played it, played up like the, um, it was just like a little more, you know what I mean? It was like heightened a little bit more. So it like, it felt, they got the like heightened fun vibe. It's also perfect. It's also perfectly placed too. Yeah, totally. Like, mm-hmm. You know, that's part of it. Um, 
two more thoughts I have before we get into spoilers. Real quickly, uh, one, I wish Rebecca Ferguson's character had a little bit more to do. Yep, I agree. She had a major part in Rogue Nation, and um, I think that's that's one of the stronger parts of the film. I wish she was had a little bit more in, to do the, in this one, but either way, I'm glad she's in it. She's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's directed by the same director, same director yeah. as Rogue Nation. Mm-hmm. First time it's ever happened in yeah this series to the same director do two back to back. Um, he had some concerns about doing this again because he knows like the fans might backlash against that or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he actually tried his best to make this movie feel like it was a different, like made from someone else. Yeah. Like it, which is like interesting. He tried to make it, yeah. He tried to make it feel like it wasn't like the same type of film again. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you get that. Like it feels a little darker, feels a little grimmier. Yeah, it totally has like a Christopher Nolan vibe for some of those action pieces. You can see it. The score a little bit. Mm-hmm. He probably drew upon like many different inspirations, but yeah, it felt a little different. No, definitely. Um, but I really appreciated it. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on in, into our spoiler review of Mission Impossible Fallout. When the clock stops, Ethan Hunt will lose everyone he ever cared about. You don't understand what you're involved in. You need to walk away. That's not who we are. Maybe we need to reconsider that. Accept it, Ethan. You've lost this one. What's done is done. What's done is done when we say it's done. Showtime. Oh, my God. I gotta say, I, one big thing I had against Rogue Nation mm-hmm. was that the one of the strongest scenes was the very first scene, and it with never the plane, really, the plane, mm-hmm. the spectacle of the plane. Yeah, it was. Nothing it else. was the big stunt that, of the movie. Right, that's the big stunt. With this, you get the big stunt at the end, which I really, yeah. I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, but, I think that makes more sense. Yeah, it's the way it should be, and because you sort of end on a really strong note. I did feel like the helicopter scene played a little too long, definitely. But it was pretty incredible, and he he did literally train for a year to do that. That's crazy. He, he trained for a year to get to literal expert level helicopter pilot. Like he's a Tom Cruise is an expert helicopter pilot so Just think about that so when we were saying that a lot of it's real do you think like yeah. the mounted shot behind him in the helicopter of his back where you can see out the window yeah do you think that's real it it, it is real that is it's real, real. That is insane. there is a i look i saw it today there is a 360 video someone made mm-hmm. like a 360 degree video um using little like shot like 360 cameras that were planted during those scenes damn and you can spin them around literally that's him he's really doing that by himself he's flying the helicopter through these crevices he dangles from the helicopter like he's a uh, he's a pilot he's an expert level helicopter pilot that trained to do that for this movie they gotta be shooting some of this on a soundstage though the helicopter scenes are all in the air, dude. So what do they do when they, like, throw people out of the helicopters? Like, when they fall or whatever? Yeah, he, like, fights a guy and punches him in the face and, like, throws two guys out of the side of the helicopter. I th- maybe that might be. I don't know. I'm, I'm just curious. Sure the majority... Like, I well, believe I the ma- it, well... you know, but it's, like, how elaborate does it go? Like, how far, how deep is his obsession? With like well, I can't attest. It, you know, I can't attest to those scenes, but I can, I I can tell you, 
him piloting the helicopter is real. And Henry Cavill mm. shooting the, the gun out of the helicopter, that's all real. Damn. Like, you can... You really see it in IMAX, too, because it's literal full square frame. Mm. Just, like, your entire vision, boom. And it it's real. Hell yeah. It, that's, what, that's what makes it so amazing. But, yeah, that's why it's played out so long, too, because... Um, I also read that the editor, the helicopter footage scene amounted to 70 hours of footage. Jesus Christ. And it ended up being like seven minutes long, Mm -hmm. the entire sequence. It it was intercut with other things, but yeah, that's a lot of freaking footage. That's insane. And it's all, I had thought that they had shot IMAX because an IMAX theater looks fucking imax but they actually shot it in 6k um 6k digital for oh, that. Okay. the rest of the film is film mm-hmm. but for those big imax scenes it's actually six to eight k i mean that digital. makes sense it's like i mean where's the yeah. handoff it's like you're gonna have this guy piloting this insane helicopter right. thing it's like you can't be sticking a giant film camera <laughs> like in the well, back an of this IMAX helicopter camera, yeah an imax camera would be too heavy and mm-hmm. too big same thing for when they jump out of the plane that's a really great IMAX looking shot. Um, 8K footage. That's real. Yeah, that, that's literally. I thought that was jumping out. That of was the plane. coolest scene in the movie. Was the sky diving? That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. And that the fact that they shot at that that time too mm-hmm. was like so specific of a time. Like that's so hard to do to totally. get that like lighting throughout. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's insane. But like, there's another thing where like. I believe that they really got a lot of those shots, but, like, they didn't fly through a thunderstorm. No. You know what I mean? Obviously not. So it's like... Yeah, of course. So if they're doing, like, that segment, not, like, it's like, I... It's less that I don't care, because I think it's impressive no matter what. But It's I, impressive. I'm just yeah. curious, like, what, what's what, you know what I mean? Like, how you piece that together. And yeah, it's I don't smart, because... Because you see the practical thing, and then it makes you immediately just go, wow, that's happening. So you, like, almost, like, subconsciously write off, you know, the fact that it's fake. Yeah. You know what I mean? mean, And the fact that you know that they're not clearly going through a lightning storm, it feels feels part of the scene. That that, that is actually real. Mm -hmm. So it's really impressive how they, like, yeah, how they mingle those two. Yeah, totally. You know? Like, I feel like that's so hard to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I wouldn't even know how they did... Like, how did they do the storm? No idea. Like, that's that's a green screen, I guess. And they jump out, like... Yeah, I don't know. But it looks so good. Yeah, it looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. But, um, yeah, apparently for the skydive scene, the camera guy had the camera, like the 8K camera... Mm-hmm. It was a, I would believe it was a red on his head weapon head red on, on his yeah head red <laughs> on his head and so he's like diving and looking up and like getting Tom Cruise coming down with the light on his face like damn that guy's crazy man yeah that's insane he's fifty six years old fucking asshole <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost thirty and I'll never be in that kind of shape or that attractive at that age like yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like totally he is a, a monster i i don't get it it's mm-hmm. crazy yeah it's fucked like him that one scene where he's just like running he's sprinting that scene speed. was amazing too that's the foot chase yeah 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 that was really good like he a 56 year old man sprinting at full yeah and you can tell he's like (laughs) yeah (laughs) he just like looks like flat he's like a flat curve like his whole yeah it's weird i can't even do that for 10 feet no way no way miles (laughs) (laughs) yeah i really enjoyed that scene that was cool yeah it just the the action feels seamless mm-hmm. and it's just non-stop yet there's 
the perfect amount of pacing for when you get to take a breather for a second and then it goes starts yeah. up again you know i would say for me it kind of started to dwindle a bit at mm-hmm. like the big switcheroo segment where everyone's switching up everyone yeah like uh, the double crossing yeah like up till that point all in like fuck Mm. yeah had a big ass smile on my face the whole time and then so good that was like okay you know like i get it everyone's double crossing and then there's like that gunfight which was fine but i don't know that's when they go to london right they like go to meet her in london or whatever and they're gonna make the switch and then they don't and then the whole Henry Cavill escapes and they go track him. Right. Well, I think it's uh, well they go from the gunfight scene. Henry Cavill gets away there. Yeah. And the gunfight, and then they they immediately go to um, is it Kazakhstan or something like yeah, that? Yeah, wherever that place is. They they go there. Yeah. To that camp. That's the next place they go. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say. Just post the switcheroo was the um, where I was like, okay, and also just knowing when all that's happening, it's like, man, there's still that big ass helicopter scene to happen. Yeah, just like I know, shit. There's good, there's long. like forty five minutes left in this fucking movie. You know yeah. what I mean? And I've already it's watched a, long, like it's a, a long movie's movie. worth of stuff. It, it's a long movie. They. they they definitely pack in a lot of scenes in there. Because mm-hmm. the helicopter um, fight itself is amazing. But Oh, it's incredible. It's just like takes so long to get there. And then yeah. after it crashes, it's like so long till I know. And it's like everything is so heightened. Like the remote has to be right on the edge of the cliff. The the hook has to grab the thing and like they're dangling. Of course. You know what I mean? It was like I could have just stood for, like, them to crash and just have a fist fight, and he just, like, punches the shit out of him and wins. You know what I mean? Like, Well, that's what I mean. Like, the helicopter scene went on a little too long. Yeah. Like, the helicopter chase was too long. Mm. Um, so then by the time that, like, the actual chase ends, it's like, oh, shit, now there's this whole other thing where he has to, like, fight him, you know? And it's like, okay. It just kept, like, being, I mean, like, Ugh. like It's crazy. You feel like it's a whole... It's a whole other movie's worth of action. Yeah, you know? seriously. You could take where they go to Kazakhstan through the rest of the movie, and that can be half of one, yeah. one other movie. Definitely. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's wild. Um, yeah, it's it's really crazy. One thing we didn't talk about, I thought the uh, fight in the bathroom was pretty badass. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it was great. That was like a really good scene. Mm-hmm. Um, another part there with seeing an IMAX, the the sound in that scene was yeah. just whew, felt in your chest, like um, so it's punches, just sure, like even, real hard. Just oh yeah, just and that the, gets the gets the um, uh, you know gets the toilet head like slamming yeah. their head down or on the sink or whatever. Just like every hit like felt. Mm-hmm. like it hurt <laughs> you know? totally. um but like act, the action and like the choreography was really cool as well yeah that scene was awesome yeah, scene. Yeah. all the action scenes up to the helicopter one were incredible the foot oh, yeah, chase so the cool. motorcycle chase thing um yep although i think i think the motorcycle scene doesn't live up to the one that's in rogue nation yeah which is like one of the most impressive action scenes in years. I remember that being very cool. I would need to it's rewatch a... it. But I did think that yeah. this one was shot really well. There were a lot of oh, very it's still cool shot really shots. Well. And but differently as well. Like like I loved yeah. like oh, there's a lot of like really flat like side shots where you're seeing everything go by and like how determined he is, like when he's going around the roundabout. Which is really cool scene. Like I mm. like that's cool to have like a cool location in general. Definitely. Yeah, and the traffic going so like, the opposite and like, way and he's like Yeah. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really need to rewatch uh, Rogue Nation. 
You do. You do. How much is that 4K? Hi highly recommend, dude. I bet it. Oh, 4K looks so good. I bet. <sighs> I'm going to be jealous when you watch that. <laughs> Let's see what we're dealing with here. Ooh, it looks like they're 20 each. It's not bad. I mean, if you're just going to get one of the, one or two of them. Yeah. See, my problem is, though, I won't be able to just get, like, two. Oh, of course. You know? <laughs> right. It's like, do I need Mission Impossible 2 on 4K? Absolutely not. Will I buy it if I have all the <laughs> other ones? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> it will be owned. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I got the Blu-ray set for really cheap because the 4Ks were about to come out. Mm -hmm. That's why I bought Which it. Which is like, pretty oh, good. Oh, this is insanely cheap. Um, so if you don't feel like dishing out the, the money for the 4K. It's true. You can always get the blue. It's just a little bogus. There's no box set. Not that I would get one because I know that there's, you know, the other movie. But, like, really? Yeah, no option. Say. No option for the box I set. I didn't even know there wasn't one. Like when they announced 4K, I, thought, I assumed that like there would be a set. Yeah, no way. It's but they're all this. separate. What what oh, they wow. need to do is before the movie comes out, you release the box set, and then you leave space in the box for the new one, and it gives incentive to buy the new movie. Yeah, that's what James Bond did. Yeah. So the it's James like Bond set? if they were, had released a Mission Impossible set that was six Blu-rays wide, or seven six yeah six six including this one yeah that's what i'm saying yeah if they had released one yeah. with all the just take the normal releases slap them in a box with an extra amount of space i yeah. i'd own it by now i would already have it right you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah i agree i agree yeah it's bogus especially since they timed it to promote the current film yeah. that's out, you know what I mean? You'd like, think people would so do it that. Sense. It, they, it's not like something people do, which is stupid. It's very bogus. Except they did it for James Bond. Yeah, that's like the only thing I can think of that did it. When Skyfall was coming out, they did that. Mm -hmm. But now those people are fucked because there's... They should have just put a whole page extra. Yeah, I Like know. a whole, like, like, four or five discs. It's just like, hey, you're going to have this for a while. Like... Anyways, what are you gonna do? Um, yeah, any other thoughts on Fallout? Not really. Um, not many complaints aside from the end was a little much. Um, and Alec Baldwin in no way could punch Henry Cavill and make him that affected by it oh he even <laughs> looks weak against him because he's sort of like Ugh. yeah it looks <laughs> like henry cavill's literally going like oh no like it's just like, oh, oh it's like no way like i'm not buying that sorry alec baldwin alec baldwin's like throwing his whole body weight into yeah, it too, like, into like one fist no way no way <laughs> uh yeah well he's dead now i guess right yeah fucking dead <laughs> They had to get rid of his character, I think. But mm. at the same time, like in the theater, it felt like, ooh, like it, the audience was sort of like, oh, like gasping a little bit when he died, which it's a, it's, it's a, it attests to the fact that they made him like a nice character, like a likable character. Mm. Totally. Because if you're like, oh, oh, for Alec Baldwin, it's like, well, they made him a good character then. Mm. I was kind of shocked that Jeremy Renner wasn't in this one. Yeah, because he's in... Not necessarily. He's in Rogue Nation, like, a little bit, right? And, and well, he has a bigger role in um, the fourth one. Yeah, but, like, they kind of... It felt like they, like, kind of phased him out of the last one. Like, he was in yeah, it for, I mean, like, an, an obligatory amount of time. Smaller amount. Yeah. yeah, but he's still in it. He's a he's an active character working with Alec Baldwin and stuff. Mm -hmm. But now he's not in this one at all. So... Um, Work. Maybe too busy on that in Infinity War. Yeah, seriously. Infinity Wars. <clears throat> so yeah, um, I, I probably have other thoughts to say, but I can't think of them right now. But um, yeah, overall, really enjoyed the film. I thought, like I said, raised the bar on the action. Mm -hmm. It felt like this this franchise has really found it found its footing in Rogue Nation. 
like it felt solid in its in its footing, and now it's it's living in that footing. It's just like mastery of of its tone. It's um it knows what the franchise is. It knows what we want. You know, it knows that we want this outrageous spectacle action. You got to throw in the masks in there. Yeah. Every time, which is uh, amazing. Yeah, they're great. Great characters. Um, just good stuff all around. Just very highly entertaining. Um. So yeah, I, it's probably my favorite movie this summer, and I, I'm kind of sad that we're not going to really have another big blockbuster this year. I don't think, like, yeah, on that level. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, I'm glad that this exists, and um, can't wait to watch it again. So yeah, it's great. Uh what would you rate this movie? I don't know. I'm between heavy four, light four point five. I'm I'm on four point five. Yeah. I'll go I'll um, go heavy four. I uh yeah, I, I'm giving it a four point five. Um I'm I'm not going towards five because I don't think it's a perfect movie. I do feel like there are some things that it's it's just not quite perfect. There's yeah. like I'd mentioned earlier, like um some of the action did feel a little like we need to do this for a spectacle like them mm-hmm. jumping out of the plane they didn't necessarily have to have that but it's really cool um and yeah i don't know i i just that's where i land four and a half mm-hmm. I, I gave rogue nation a four and i feel like this one gets another half star for just the pure spectacle of the action like totally. it's just so entertaining yeah it was really good i i very fun watch at the theater I'll also say another yeah. weird thing. I'm looking at the poster here. Angela Bassett in it for like three scenes, and one of them's like a video chat. What's up with that? That was weird. It's like barely in the fucking movie. Yeah, you're right. What? I don't know. I thought that was weird. Yeah, you're right. That is weird. Well, she had some scenes that, like, she was interacting with Alec Baldwin and stuff. Yeah. Well, but, yeah, it's a small role. It's a small role. Yeah, it's just, it It felt strange for her to, like, come back at the end like it was some big thing. It's like, I don't know, like, what's she really even doing in this thing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, felt weird to me. Yeah. That's it. That was the only other thought I had. Yeah, and like I said earlier, I wish Rick, Rebecca Ferguson had a little bit more to do. Yeah. Um, but one thing we didn't comment on, which is like we were saying culmination of all the other stuff, is like his wife came back. She's from the... Family. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, having her back and sort of wrapping that up. Like, mm-hmm. we never really talk about what happened with them. Um, I like how they wrapped that up. Yeah. They, like, th- ended that story. and Yeah, it was yeah. it was nice for the it to come back. It felt a little weird, but, like, I didn't necessarily think it was, like, bad, you know? But it was, like, feels yeah. weird, you know? Yeah, but I it guess... does feel a little weird, or... too, with, like, his sort of... There's some tension, obviously, with him and mm-hmm. Elsa Faust. And even Bing Rame's character is, like, he really cares about you. Yeah. And stuff. Um, yeah, because, like... So it clearly, like, sets it up to, oh, now he's open to have this relationship with Rebecca Ferguson's character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, like at the end when she's there and she like leaves and then it's just like, all right, cycle in the other female character. And he's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, felt a little strange. Yeah. But, um, so another thing though, real quick. So was it that she was like placed there intentionally for the purpose of this? Like, this was the guy's master plan, or is this just a coincidence that he decided to bomb this because she was there? I think it was a coincidence that she was there. That's the impression that I got. Because I didn't know if it was a thing. Cause don't they mention that, like, they were asked by someone that they, like, didn't know or something to come, and they thought it was a good cause? They did. Like, I, they, they mentioned something about how they got there that seemed weird. 
So I was like, are they implying that the villain, like, has been playing this, like, long con on them in this way? Because I don't know what the timeline uh, is. Like, no. No, because he, he didn't really even know about her. And also, when you when it comes down to it, the main villain guy was Henry Cavill. He's the one yeah. that planted the bombs and all that stuff. The guy with the beard... Well, no, they, know they do about know her. about her, though, because he has the picture of her. Oh, yeah, you're right. So, like... He does know about so her. So, like, was she sent there by them because they knew that this place is a good place to bomb because of, like, the irrigation system and all that? Or was she there so they decided so they decided to bomb there you know what i mean it, it's like yeah it, it's a little the weird. way it works clear. out is know. like a little convenient and i can't tell if it was like intentionally so or it's just convenient that like that works out that way you know what i mean yeah i don't, I don't know i don't know it just sort of does feel a little convenient mm. but I think it's so, yeah. I think it's probably a convenient thing to wrap up the plot line. Because it, it like, does seem plausible that like they lured her there. Because that one guy's like obsessed with revenge on him. Right. So if well, he's he in cahoots, to, with, he wants to peg everything on Tom Cruise's character. Yeah. So like if he and make him like suffer and you know what I mean. It yeah. makes sense that if he's in cahoots with Henry Cavill and Henry Cavill knows that she exists, that they would do something to get her there so they could kill her in this bombing and make him know about that. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't seem out of their wheelhouse or they they seem yeah. capable of doing that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Something I was foggy on. Um yeah, it's there's some there's some things that are a little foggy. It, there's just a lot that happens. Yeah. There's a lot that happens. It's sort of hard to exactly place everything. I need to watch it again. Totally. Get that it's 4K when it comes too. out, baby. Oh my god. It's going to look so good. It's going to look very good. I'm glad they shot it on film too mm -hmm. for the majority. Yeah, it looks very awesome. It's very nice. Um All right. That's cool. that's gonna wrap it up for our review. For sure. Um, so Zach, where can people find other episodes of this podcast? Um, <clears throat> sorry. As always, you can find our other episodes on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and YouTube. You can um, also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you enjoy the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. Every rating, especially five-star ratings, they bring us to more listeners you can, on those platforms. You can also email us at... Yeah, you can also email us at listen to us right about movies at gmail.com. And thanks to our Patreon producer, Sean Pierce, and your Patreon supporters. You guys can also be a producer and or supporter of this podcast by visiting our Patreon page and becoming a monthly patron for as little as $1. Visit www.patreon.com slash L-T-U-R-A-M podcast. All right, Zach, that's going to wrap it up for today. It was a good talk. Yeah, good chat, man. All right, man. Until next time. Until next time.